our team has developed here at the Mayo Clinic in Florida one of the largest, if not the largest repository of human and human-derived specimens directly from the operating room with a very specific focus on uh, central nervous system tumors, as well as spine tumors, tumors of the brain and the spine. And this represents the combined efforts of our patients and an enormous team at the Mayo Clinic that has uh, enabled us to have a numerous amount of discoveries that is allowing us to move science forward. So, uh, like we were mentioning, Dr. Q really, you know, has spearheaded these efforts. Uh, Dr. Kinos Hinojosa, he's, you know, fondly known as Dr. Q. He's the Monica Flynn Jacoby Endowed Chair, William J. and Charles H. Mayo Professor of Neurosurgery, James C. and Sarah K. Kennedy, Dean of Research of the Mayo Clinic, Florida. Um, my name is Diogo Manish Garcia. I'm a research fellow in the Neurosurgery Department here also at Mayo Clinic, Florida. Today, what we're really talking about is the the paper that will be coming up in the Mayo Clinic proceeding shortly. The title is From the Operating Room to the Laboratory, Role of the Neuroscience Tissue Biorepository in the Clinical, Translational, and Basic Science Research Pipeline. One of the main challenges really with translational research is access to tissue. If you have access to tissue, you really can do wonderful things, but that is really one of the hardest challenges. So what our team started to do is really take advantage of every single opportunity we have and not let any tissue go to waste. So starting in 2016, we started collecting every single specimen with the consent of our patients. This is truly the effort of not only our team, but also our patients. And it has resulted in a huge repository um, that has really become a platform for our own discoveries, but also for a network of collaborations across the nation and the world that are now discovering their own um, findings and that has led to numerous publications, numerous grants, and hopefully change that will really impact patient care. That, that really is the ultimate goal. Um, and as we were mentioning, what it really covers is the repository that includes by now 13,000 samples from over 1,000 patients, from patients all over the world. Dark, I don't know if you want to mention also like from how many countries we see patients, because that I think is also one of the main uh, differentiators. Right now, we have specimens from over a couple dozen countries from around the world. And that is actually a resource that allows us to also understand not only sex differences in cancer, but also genetic differences. This biorepository includes tumor samples from nearly 500 unique patients right now with also matched blood and in many cases, cerebrospinal fluid and also adipose tissue fat from which we establish stem cells. We have also generated primary patient-derived cell lines from about 50 unique patients with the really devastating high-grade gliomas. And most recently, we have uh, different tumor regions from the same patients because as we begin to understand cancer, we understand now that there is an environment in which cancer lives. And if you think about it like our world, whatever is going on in the North Pole is not the same that is going on in the South Pole or the East Coast, the West Coast. The same thing is going on in our brain tumors, and that is allowing us to understand and unravel some of the mysteries. And in our manuscript, we also include our methodology that ensures the highest standards in the handling and processing of the tissue of these amazing samples, all the way from the operating room to the laboratory. Like Dr. Q was mentioning, one of the huge differentiators of our repository is really how inclusive it is and diverse. So not only do we have a cadre of dozens of countries from all different continents, really, um, but we also have minority, both racial and ethnic. So 14.2 and 8.5% uh, of our patients represented, those are ethnic and racial minorities, respectively. So 13% Hispanic, 5.4% African-American. So for instance, if there's a particular interest in studying uh, cancer, be it brain cancer or spine cancer or metastatic cancer in that patient population, that is something we can do both at the Mayo Clinic and through collaboration. I think that is truly unique and you will not find that in most repositories. Um, how it relates to clinical practice, 
it really enables translational research because you're we're using human specimens we're using human derived specimens um, and that can occur both at Mayo but also through collaborations with other institutions across the world we use freshly obtained tissue our findings you know are important because the tissue that we use is many times established, you know, from patients directly, and we create avatars that recapitulate the human disease. Also, not only the disease, but also the animal models, the different models that we use really allows us to make new discoveries. That can only happen when we're using fresh tissue that we directly obtain from the operating room, and then allows us to translate our work from the lab to the patient first from the patient to the laboratory when we obtain the tissue and then back from the laboratory to the patient. Absolutely. And one important question that we also get, even from our own patients, is how is this tissue that they're trusting us really going to impact future patients that they might themselves never meet? And I think that by really having access to that human, human-derived tissue, we are circumventing one of the main limitations that research has faced recently, which is the usage of commercial tissue or commercial cell lines, which for honestly, most researchers will agree, we don't really know if it recapitulates tumor anymore or which tumor does it. And then you have almost like a cascade effect where findings subsequently are really influenced by that huge bias. We have access to their patient information. We have access to their tissue, their cell lines, their blood, their CSF, their adipose tissue. So really research that comes from this repository or from collaborations that use this tissue can really recapitulate human disorders, can really recapitulate human cancer. And Dark, I don't know if you want to also discuss a little bit about what do you think will be the next next step now that we have come this far. Beautiful. Thank you, Diego. Absolutely. I think that the next step, several steps, number one is increasing our accrual with care being taken to make sure that we register important emerging, emerging factors. When you look at the tumor, like what I was mentioning before, the sampling, the different coordinates, the different samples within the tumors, and correlating that to the images of the patients, using artificial intelligence to collate all that information, taking those samples from different regions and analyzing the tumor microenvironment, the immune response, looking at different patients, and also giving them some therapies. For instance, we're giving them therapies with mesenchymal stem cells, seeing how they react when we have to go back to the operating room or treating the patients even before surgery with radiation and seeing how radiation is really influencing a tumor microenvironment within different regions. So that way we can begin to personalize care and future therapies and we can discover new therapies. And all this is gonna be integrated, of course, with artificial intelligence, uh, intelligence. But beyond that, imagine a world in which we're looking at the body at the brain cancer, for instance, beyond the brain, but we're looking at the entire body. And now we are engaging ourselves in collecting feces, urine, saliva, to look at metabolic function, to look at the influence of the GI system on the immune microenvironment because they're not disconnected. I think that uh, sometimes we focus on finding cures when in reality, the hope and healing is in front of us. Every time a patient agrees to be part of this biorepository, they know they're being part of history and the healing of their soul begins. And I'm very grateful for that. And I thank our patients for allowing us to be part of their journey, for allowing us to together make new discoveries so we can change the harsh outcome that many neurological diseases have. So thank you. So I just wanted to thank uh, the opportunity to share our findings. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.